about 60% of the total population of Nairobi live in the informal settlements. What are these people doing in the urban areas? What are they doing? Are they just there in the slums doing criminal uh, activities? All they are giving services to the urban poor. All they are giving services to the development of the city. Some of them, they are a cash labor industry area. Some of them, we, we employ them in our houses. Some of them are the domestic workers. Some of them are the watchmen. Some of them are doing the self-employed job. So how do we make sure that these people are recognized as one of the key stakeholders in the urban areas? The experience of the urban poor in accessing security services, but also the interaction with the security agencies present in this country, but also the experiences in accessing services in relation to sexual and, and reproductive health, response protection and prevention uh, components. So people who, are, who live in Madare mostly work in Parklands, Westlands, Mudaiga, right? Um, and those people do not use public transport, yeah? So if that young woman is walking at that time in the night, say 5.30 a.m., they are, they are most likely to be violated, they are most likely to maybe be raped, they may be, may be mugged, all sorts of things might happen. So you find that the poverty in those uh, slums is there and it needs to be addressed by the government. Even though they have introduced this uh, transfer cash and this other youth fund and women fund, ways of fund, still it is not addressing the right people. You find those people who can access those money, they are those somehow informed. Some upgrading programs which are existing in Kenya are meant to address the issue of services to the poor in the informal settlement. Issue like housing, affordable housing. But when the upgrading is done, how many people from the informal settlement access those houses? Isli, Kariobangi, then we have Kisumu, places like Manyata, Nyalenda, and Obunga. The information on poverty we have on such areas is like things like uh, water rationing, insecurity stroke theft, early pregnancies stroke unplanned pregnancies, we have uh, prostitution, uh, drug abuse, the cost of house housing is quite high for some of the residents in such places, we have food hygiene, then we have the poor drainage stroke sewerage. We would love to want information on exact population on such areas, how many youth stroke women access the funds which are created for them, data on unemployment stroke, uh, also data on uh, teenage pregnancy. Then we will also want to want, uh, we will also want to have information on uh, the priority areas in terms of budget allocations as well as the causes of things like gender-based violence and poverty. So we have the, the map. You see on the upper part is an informal, uh, an, an informal settlement, that is Kibra. And this down here we have Hoodley. So in our places here we have people. You see in Kibera we have a lot of people. Up here we have a, a takataka, a heap of takataka there. Uh, infrastructure is pia tukona hapa, unaona ni mbaya hapa, hizi ni west, the sewer line, sewer jinapita hapo. Na tukotuna shule moja, na hii unajua ni yote era moja. Alafu tukotuna dispensary moja, si hata osi ile tuka dispensary. So when we come to Hoodley, you see they have apartments, zao at least ziko kubwa, wakona ka parking, na ni self-contain, huko kuna choya tenbob. Awa pia wakona supa na ka soko ingine hapo. They have a playing ground. Now, they have a playing ground. They have a group of schools here. So this map shows just the inequality in our informal uh, uh, places. What information would you want to have? Uh, for us in Kibera, in Aizo Shidaze, we have factual data on social services, population, and uh, we on information. Tunataka to kuen information on government, county government policies and plans, resource allocation budget. Non state actors working on the ground. And then the last one is structure of governance. It was interesting to see how people are struggling to identify uh, poor urban locations. When people started talking about Kibera, 
They even went deep to start mentioning village by village. People argued that the whole Kibera is not poor. We have neighborhoods that are rich, or at least are considered formal. It was good to see that people are arguing along that line and even trying to, to create some boundaries to say this side is not poor, this side is poor. But the population in Kibera has always been so debatable, depending on who you ask. Some people would say 2 million, some people would say 1 million, some people would say uh, 250,000, depending on their interest. So that is good data to look for. We need to know the exact population of Kibera. Kibera being an informal settlement doesn't mean that the people living there are informal. We are citizens, we pay taxes, and we need government services. Even the school-going children need school. These are our points. Point number one that you came up with is women empowerment. Number two, we have public awareness, uh, public sensitization on poor development initiatives in terms of health. Number three, we have access to info information. Number four, go beyond information and help in implementation or enf enforcement. Number five, we have public, pla public participation, uh, forming working groups from our community to implement what we have. Number six, accountability and follow-ups through working groups. Uh, the first one was discrimination in allocating resources and funds. Now, number two was uh, the lack of prioritizing of in policy planning. Uh, number three was the lack of ex exposure and uh, limited access to information. Number four was inadequate government policy presence and supervision, which now facilitates social vices. Uh, the fifth one was disempowerment of the business and trading environment. And the last one was bureaucracy in government services that facilitates facilitate corruption and discrimination. Our solutions to that, uh, we, we had been told to give three. One, the capacity building of this government worker, so that this worker giving IDs or this worker giving youth fund knows exactly what he's looking for and the checklist that he's supposed to have. Social number two was uh, a use of radio, TV, and other mediums. You find that this information mingi zikifanyi kazi wanaonswa kwa gazeti in English. So 99% of us are to juangi zikifanyika. Number three was creating a citizen accountability structure mandated by the people. Both groups have done two things. One, they identified what causes exclusion, and secondly, they proposed um, what can be done. First thing would be, so who shouldn't we leave behind? And that means that we have to be very um, deliberate in identifying who is considered marginalized, what programs are being uh, developed, and how uh, will they impact on different segments of the community. And therefore, you can see from some of the specific interventions that were being made, we we were looking at, uh, for example, in group 2A, there are questions about how do we address uh, issues that are specific to youth, how do we address issues that are specific to women, persons with disability, older persons, uh, indigenous communities. But it's not just about classifying, for example, women as one big group. The issue is also a woman in Mukuru and a woman in Lovington have two very different needs, for instance. And therefore, it's important for us to be thinking about as we develop some of these programs that we know who exactly we are actually going to target. The third thing is creating and facilitating um, and safeguarding, more importantly, spaces for public participation. And lastly, um, there's a question around safe, uh, civic education and access to information. It would be important to know who is being targeted, how they've been targeted, who gets enrolled, uh, but more than that, what are the policies in place? What is the legislation in place? And it falls on both sides. It's not just the consumers, but also some of the people who are actually responsible for um, rolling out those programs. In our discussion, we realized that 
in the revenue sharing and, and devolution, we came to see challenges that may be affecting the government. And uh, these challenges were also brought about by some few, uh, uh, some few things, some few issues that we raised. Inadequacy in, uh, in revenue sharing. The second one being political goodwill. The third issue is being evaluation, poverty evaluation. The, the fourth one is uh, prioritization of infrastructure. And the fifth one is minimal participation in forums. We also came up with, uh, with solutions. So the, the first solution in, uh, in all these problems is that we need to have better commitment for change. So we also need to have a better planning for allocation of, 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 of revenue. We need to, to create better awareness for everything that is happening in our counties, in our societies. The policymakers and the government also needs to have better systems of allocation of revenue. Um, so one of the things that we agreed is that definitely uh, revenue sharing uh, does not target poverty in, in urban areas. Now, the, chal the first challenge we had is um, um, there was an understanding that a lot of the allocation or some of the allocation is based on census and that information is, is not correct. Therefore, the allocations are, are not co correct. Um, lack of clear information, especially when it comes to issues around eviction, when it comes to issues around uh, polio. Um, the other one is uh, around budget allocation, spend and tracking. Then, of course, there's uh, the, the big one. Government has poor planning, implementation, and, and strategies, and there's a lot of uh, corruption. In terms of the messages, is we demand national and county clear information from na uh, national and county level. The second one is around uh, building the capacity of people so that they can be able to know their rights. The line that has already been said over and over again, zero tolerance to corruption. Then there's uh, transparency of the, of the census. There seems to be a need for some form of accountability, uh, maybe increased citizen engagement. Uh, there's some concern about the census. Uh, its transparency and whether the information is relevant to the current setting. Uh, also the, p the poverty data and whether the information used in the poverty data is useful right now. There's a section on prioritization and whether we are spending money on the right things. Every year we spend almost increasingly about 150 billion shillings going forward on roads every single financial year. Seems to be a need for some form of accountability, uh, maybe increased citizen engagement. Uh, what's, what's, what is there doesn't seem adequate for, for providing public engagement. Uh, there's some concern about the census, uh, its transparency, and whether the information is relevant to the current setting. Uh, also the, the poverty data and whether the information used in the poverty data is useful right now. There's a lot of concern about planning and the adequacy of planning and the budget execution and utilization and then both the national and the county level. And uh, that was also an area of concern in the, in the groups we had the plenary session. So I think uh, maybe that's a big area you should take forward. Uh, there's a section on prioritization and whether we are spending money on the right things. Within the public participation bill, there's a requirement, there's a requirement that describes how public participation is supposed to happen. There's, a, there's, there's some standards you're supposed to fulfill, there's some levels you're supposed to agree on. If that is not fulfilled, that means that public participation can be deemed null and void by a court of law. This is a mechanism, a constitutionally provided mechanism for you to intervene in the affairs, in public affairs from a very powerful angle. Meaning that you can actually have the control of budget uh, issued with a court injunction stopping her from spending the budget of a particular county government or national government based on your court application and lack of public participation.
in terms of security, we found that we have few officers. One thing we suggest is that we should increase the police citizen ratio. Second of all, what another thing that we supposed to, we're supposed to do is reshuffling of police officers. Thirdly, uh, we talk about gender balance. So uh, one of the things is that we lack, we lack clear land ownership. And lastly, I'll talk about sh shortage of good low-cost housing. We will sit here, we will talk, like everyone has said. Public participation will be done. But hakuna mtu anafuatilia. Every time we are, we are, what someone was saying in our group, acheni ku complain, okay? I'm challenging you to participate in the implementation of the budget. Ienye iko sai. How can you interact with it to ensure you know where these 187 people are, 187,000 people are, and how they are being distributed within the urban poor? And then someone raised a, a question on incomplete projects. I think that too is a question of tracking implementation. Okay? Ata kama pesa, pesa azita wai tosha, but zile zinyaziko, who's putting, who's um, putting our leaders to task? So, kuna education. So, after a while, then we could notice that education is not a pro poor program. It's our rights, no? But kuna have a eh, bursary na help. Then you get gaff, linda mama, na linda jamin. So, you make impact poor, impact kada. You get any NHF. So, NHF, you make one of the only health insurance and MC, which you can afford. And then, another pro poor program, ni youth fund, weso fund, women enterprise fund. At first, you may say, yeah, as much as it was, was said, because it's what. Eh? So, key challenges, then you have to report to the if it was what, kuna bribery, kuna nepotism, kuna discrimination. It's only the challenge to report to if it was what. So, key messages to the policy makers. As much as to nasema kuna ill, leave no one behind. You know, if I go inclusive of inclusivity of everyone, APA uh, could implemented. Uh, Na pia ipewe reinforcement na ifanya evaluation. First, I've, I've, heard, I've heard they've talked about slum upgrading program. The, the upgrading is there, yes. Especially where I come from in Kibra, tukona manyumba. But there is a problem. When it comes to giving the owner of the house, the house. Hapo kuna corruption. Unapata, mimi nyumba ilandiko kwa jina angu, sindo? Lakini kikuja ni kupewa... Unwana sasa ni petita mepewa. Kuna nepotism. Tukona tribalism. Alafu corruption. Isa ndio mama yao. Lack of information. Most of us don't have information. Sindo? We don't have enough information. Especially when it comes to these national and county projects. We don't know. Sindo? Some of us nwesikenga tu budget ilisomwa, allocation ilifanywa. Sindo? What do we know about it? Nothing. So those four. The first one, World Development Fund. There is no equity in the sharing of resources under the World Development Fund, more especially here in Nairobi. We have seen the way they, they share the resources is they use, uh, they share them equally. That means all 85 wards, for example, in Nairobi, receive an equal share of those resources. Then there is the Equalization Fund. For me, I would propose that we also include the informal settlements, because these have been neglected for many years. And on the issue of, uh, of uh, national government CDF fund, we know that CDF is a good thing, but I've always argued that it is, a, it is not the right way to share resources, considering that now we are under a different form of government. Sometimes you find uh, CDF has done a project, then the county reports that they have built, for example, an hospital or they have built uh, some facility, and then the money goes missing. Finally, the SRAM upgrading program. But from experience, from what I have seen in Soweto A, uh, what is happening is that there is a lot of uh, corruption going on. The people who were initially intended to benefit from those uh, uh, houses, they are not benefiting any longer because of the reasons which have already been mentioned by uh, Group 5A and B. So what we call for is fairness and transparency in these uh, programs, uh, which are pro poor. If that happens, I know this Kenya will go far.